Hi, um, welcome to JL Burroughs, uh, the last day of Hunted by Darkness launch, um, where I promised that I would do a reading uh, from the book. So uh, there's no better place to start than the beginning, and so I'll start there. Chapter one, Sneaky Shadows. Evie gritted her teeth as she descended from her second story window, inch by inch, the high of adrenaline racing through her. Her strappy heel slipped off the lattice and fell. Distracted, she lost her grip, sliding and grasping for something solid as several of the lattice braces crumbled under her weight. When she caught herself, she froze, her heart pounding. Did they hear her? Her parents' movie continued, and a moment later, they were laughing. She took a deep breath. Thank God she didn't get caught. She climbed down faster, but of course, they didn't notice her. They hardly paid her any attention since Tristan's cancer. She'd done well over the months and years after she promised to stand by Tristan's side no matter how hard it would be, and was. She gave up so much, pretty much everything from 8th until 11th grade, she grimaced. The top of the lattice crack, creaked, peeling off from the edge of the roof, and the 25-foot relic crashed around her, drowning out the painful thud when her back slammed into the ground. She stared up at the stars and breathed out a cloud of crystals into the air above her. She'd made it. Finally, she was free. The cold, wet autumn ground seeped into her. She got up quickly, removing oak leaves and dusting off the muddy dirt caked on her elbow. She retrieved her shoe and squared her shoulders. There was no hiding this mess. One way or another, she would get in trouble for this. At least at night, it didn't look so bad. Her stomach soured. Maybe they'd think the wind blew it down or a branch knocked it off. Maybe she'd be able to talk her way out of it. Either way, she wasn't turning back. Even if she was grounded for life, she needed a break from all the cancer crap. It was Tristan's last test results. They were the last straw. Yes, she was glad Tristan was in remission. No kid brother should ever have cancer. But she'd been waiting for three years by his bedside. Now he was cancer-free. But they still went to scans and discussed his chances of a reoccurrence. It was time for her to get a life. She ran to the nearest bush and glanced at the downstairs window. An icy breeze feathered down her spine. Something rustled in the bush next to her, its branches bent, catching on her shirt. She twisted away and a hundred tiny golden lightning bugs blinked at her. Their shimmering light moved simultaneously to the right as if they were all connected and disappeared. Evie blinked. They were lightning bugs, right? Frozen there, she'd almost convinced herself she was being ridiculous and they were harmless bugs when several of the golden eyes reappeared as if in answer to her question. Their faint light grew stronger, glaring at her. She rubbed the back of her head and blinked her eyes, trying to force her sight to make sense of what she was witnessing. When the lights disappeared, she sprinted back to the safety of the rough brick house, pressing her back into its cold strength. The wind kicked up, sending leaves swirling. She closed her eyes against its assault. The giant trees creaked and groaned, almost hiding a nearby guttural growl. Evie peeked through her lashes, studying her surroundings. Within the mayhem of debris blowing to and fro, the blackest shadow slithered toward her from under the bush. Keeping her eyes trained on it, she slid, heart thundering toward the edge of the house. She had nearly turned to run when something sniffed at her ear. The fine hairs at the back of her neck stood in goosebumps. She didn't dare move, didn't dare breathe. Blood pounded in her ears, racing it to her arms and legs. Only by sheer force of will was she able to glance up at her window. No. There was no way to go back. She fumbled with her cell phone. Turn on, come on, turn on. She swung the light beside her to find nothing. Focusing it over the yard, the beam washed the darkness with jerky bursts of light, her hands violently shaking. Around the lilac bush, a solid, inky figure slinked back into the shadows. Its humanish outline, complete with arms and legs, blinked golden eyes. What on earth? By itself, her flashlight turned off. The darkness was heavy around her, menacing, ominous. Burning ice licked along her ankle, knee, and vanished. She caught the edge of her house with her fingertips, breaking eye contact with the thick night shadows. She dared to close her eyes and will the world to behave normally again. Opening her eyes, everything was where it should be. Great. Her mind was making more out of the shadows than was there. Mr. Jack, her counselor, said these terrifying moments like her night terrors were a normal reaction to her brother's illness. Whatever was a small price to pay. He was worth it. The stupid cancer couldn't have its way. Mr. Jack suggested she find some me time to do something she wanted to do. Tonight, with the good news releasing her from Tristan's side, she wanted to go on this date. This outing was practically therapy. 
She pushed away from the protection of home and sprinted down three blocks, locking her focus on meeting James. She'd wanted this forever. Finally, she was living one well-deserved hour of freedom. Nothing, not even her own traumatized imagination, was going to keep her from living her life. It was simply a matter of shutting down her brain and living in the moment. That's what her counselor said, sort of. A shriek shattered the silence close to her ear. Her toe caught and she tripped face first into the sidewalk, her cell phone catching her fall. No, not the cell phone. She picked it up and her stomach hollowed out. The screen was shattered, stained in black, odd blues, greens, and purples. Crap. She swiped to wake the screen and sliced her finger, drawing a drop of blood. Everything was going wrong. She glanced back at the house, hidden behind several blocks of trees. Night noises needed to shut up. Her life had been in the hospital or a book. Not anymore. Down the next block, the streetlights shined. She could make it. Ignoring her instincts that swore something was after her, bringing up all kinds of stories of kids being taken in windowless vans, she continued to sprint down the sidewalk. There were so many pictures of teens outside the Walmart bathroom, and her parents' warnings about the dangers in the world were continual, but she clenched her teeth. This was her time. She'd be fine as long as she made it to the lights. It sucked to run in heels. This was why she didn't go out. Well, at first, it was because she'd vowed to stand beside her brother till he beat his cancer. Frankly, after four years, going out for herself seemed wrong. Her brother may be better, but he was still weak, still trapped at home. She paused, the wind whipping her hair into a mess. Sweating in the cold air, a prickle climbed the nape of her neck, sending her in a vicious shiver. Her nerves overwhelmed, she threw her weight into the door under the brilliant sign from McCaffrey's Burgers and Fries and spun around to push it closed. Sunday school rattled in her mind. The spirit within always guides you. What they didn't say was the spirit might set your nervous system haywire if you don't listen but her whole life was finally ahead of her. Familiar faces from school crowded the red bench booths and every stool at the countertop. Her breath caught in her throat. She'd been missing out. Something tickled her stomach and radiated through her, whole, through her until her whole body was pulsing. She grinned. Lizzie leaned back, laughing her head off with Melissa in a booth full of girls. She clearly took notes from Maleficent's character in the movie Evie sat through in the hospital with Tristan. Her calculating eyes locked with Evie's, whatever. Evie searched the room for James. Several people twisted in their seats to stare at her. A flush of heat climbed up her neck. Sure, go ahead and stare. Why would a geek stand at the front door of McCaffrey's after all? Guys, come on. It's okay. Stop fighting. Sorry. Dogs. Where was I? Um, why would it? Yeah, James must be here somewhere. What if he stood her up? If he wasn't there. More heat flushed her cheeks. He wasn't there. They were friends. She'd helped him when no one else would. He wouldn't invite her out just to stand her up, right? Maybe he's behind someone tall. Makes total sense. A glance from Lizzie forced Evie to clamp her lips shut. Stupid nerves. She couldn't just talk out loud. She was finally out. Nervous butterflies transformed from beautiful, delicate creatures into confident, sucking vampires. Had he texted her? She glanced at the shattered screen. There was no telling if he was already there. Lizzie narrowed her eyes, her crew of snobs following her lead and sneering in various shades of hot pink lipstick. Great. She didn't need the mean girls club after her. Walking farther into the cafe, she stole a glance behind the tallest person. If James was there, it was only a matter of time before he'd pop up. Instead, behind a tall dude, Cam and Dre argued in one of the booths along the glass wall. Dre gave Evie a wicked grin when Cam was turned away. She almost smiled, giving him away to Cam, whose glare could cut ice. She'd have to get the story later. Her neck and ears burned. Guys like James weren't attracted to girls with extra curves and gray-blue eyes. No, frizzy curls mixed with her geeky nature were always a recipe to becoming the homework help. Plus, he wasn't the same guy she'd loved all her life. He didn't even ask for help with his homework anymore. They weren't a match, and dreams only came true on Disney. She spun on her heel and strode toward the do door. Two pinpricks of golden light spun out of the inky night, just as her hand touched the handle. It stared at her through her reflection on the clear pane of glass. They grew into two wide, sparkling, yellow eyes streaked with the black of its pupils. Um, what is that? She whispered to her reflection. She pressed the door close as a face formed around the eyes. Its lips peeled back to reveal a sharp, jagged tooth grin. No, Evie blinked and it was gone. Her counselor was wrong. She'd already lost her mind. Her hands trembled. For now, she was stuck at McCaffrey's with her classmates. She didn't trust herself or the dark night outside. Besides, he'd asked her out, and nothing would make her heart stop hoping he'd one day really see her.
She wasn't just a geek. You okay? Lizzie beamed curiosity and fake friendliness as she smiled with disgusting sweetness and sashayed from the corner booth of the door to Evie's side. Anything said to her was always spread a mile wide, and she'd come to investigate Evie talking to herself. Evie took a shaky breath and held it, forcing her heart to stop pounding. Yup, stupid brain, stupid, stupid nerves. Wow, nice shirt. Lizzie twisted away and whispered in her friend's ear. Evie glanced at her beloved brains before beauty shirt. Whatever. They both giggled. What's got you out at night? I'm not going to tell you the real reason, so have you seen Callie? I'm meeting her. Callie's at the grill. Lizzie's gaze landed on the boys in the far left, and both girls pushed past Evie. At least one thing could be put to rest. No one else had been staring at her. It was just Lizzie and her nasty crew of gossips. Comfort food, a good burger, and salty fries would settle her rumbling stomach. Her lab partner sat backwards against the counter, and as if he'd sensed her, he twisted on his stool and waved, happily oblivious. Above his broad grin, his curly hair bounced in a four-inch cloud of tight brown curls. His arm continued pumping back and forth, despite her nod. Callie's porcelain face peeked around Caleb's shoulder, where they both sat munching. Her sleek black bob swished forward over her pink cheeks. Those two hanging out together was strange, like oil and water, or popularity and the quintessential geek. Callie grinned. Hey! Her eyes sparkled. Evie figured one day Callie would be the death of her. Took you long enough to get here. You texted like an hour ago. It's been a trip. She hugged Callie. I broke my phone on the way. Crap, that sucks. Callie scrunched her nose. It's great you came out, though. It's better than staying home curled up with a book. Hmm. A good book is sometimes the best escape. My only escape. She stole Callie's milkshake and drank the chocolate heaven. How many books had she read waiting for Tristan to finish chemo? I know. Callie's smile slipped. But it's behind you guys, and now you've got this date with James. I'm so excited for you. Shh. She didn't text Callie to have her show up and make a scene. He's not here. Callie frowned. Did he text you? Evie held out the shattered screen on her phone. Oh, man. Callie took the phone. Horrible. She passed it back, taking the milkshake and sipping it. I haven't seen him, but maybe he's in the restroom? She forced a smile. Maybe. Can I text him from your phone? Sure. Callie handed her the phone. Closing up the world around her, she texted, Hey, this is Evie texting you from Callie's phone. I smashed mine. I'm here. You coming? She set um, the phone between them and snatched the milkshake. Caleb cleared his throat. Hey. He bumped her shoulder with his. Hey. Weird. They weren't bumping shoulders, friends. The chill from outside lingered in her body. It, is it cold in here? Even with her hands in her pockets, the bones in her fingers were aching. Nah, Caleb spoke around a fry in his mouth. She stirred the straw, spinning the frozen center as one big chunk. Callie hugged her shoulders, grabbing the milkshake back. Evie sighed and shook her head. Callie just smirked. So, you have a date with James. Caleb's words were more of a challenge than a question. He ran his hand through his wild hair. Apparently not. Oh, you okay? Caleb spun the backless stool to face her, landing his hand on top of hers. Not really. Without wanting to be rude, she gently slid her hand away and moved closer to Callie, fighting the urge to run home and cry. You should forget him, Caleb smirked and leaned into her personal space. Hungry? Caleb grabbed a few flies and shoved them in his mouth. I've already forgotten him, but she still hoped he would show up. Stupid hoping. Caleb laughed. Are you laughing at me? No, he held up his hands. I was just wondering if you wanted some fries. His beautiful ocean blue eyes twinkled with at least a few secrets. Because of his Bahamian dad, his skin never lost its soft tan, and it always made his eyes stand out. He was kind of cute if you get past his constant, did you knows? Um, I guess. Being lab partners for two years basically made them friends, but the kid was impossible, always saying the worst and most perfect things at the strangest times. Caleb pushed his fries between them. She plucked one from his basket. He coughed and ran his fingers through his hair. Can we meet up this weekend to work on our chemistry project? I've already worked through most of the math and we're ready to... A red flush rushed beneath his freckles, across his cheeks and nose. His blue eyes darted to the back door. So weird. I have family stuff. Caleb's face fell. She was really just going to play the piano, another for counselor's ideas, return to the things she loved. But I guess I can meet in the afternoon. Callie winked at Evie from behind Caleb's shoulder. I have to work on that project too. Can I join? Caleb harumphed. Sure, that'd be great. Evie grinned. Caleb touched her arm. How about Saturday night? It would be fun to hang out. 
Her stomach warmed. Was he asking her on a date? Wait a minute. She narrowed her eyes. She was supposed to be on a date now. She shook her head. It was good Callie would be there. She nodded. I do need to work on the project. I'll be glad to get it done. Good. Then it's a date. Caleb focused on unwrapping his straw. Yeah, was all she could say. Besides, it wasn't like she was committed to anyone, right? She glanced at Caleb. He was so confusing. She spun from his fattening fries to people watch. Callie moved closer and leaned her back against the counter. Evie slid her arm in Callie's. Together, they'd weathered hours of what ifs and maybe if we's. Back when Evie was a freshman, she'd slipped in the hallway. Time stood still. Hundreds of eyes ate up the scene as she teetered. But James erased everything by catching her in his strong arms, sweeping her legs right out from under her before she hit the ground. It was heroic. Some rando dude gave Callie a wink and a wave. Evie glanced at Callie. She was so beautiful. Her shiny black hair slid away from her chin as she leaned back and placed her elbow on the counter. Evie smiled with Callie, but on the inside she was all scrunched up. James hadn't shown. She wasn't anything like Callie. In some ways it was good, but sometimes she wished things were different. Maybe Callie could have worn off on her a bit, she sighed. At least she got out of the house and away from all the cancer talk. I guess you're done with the fries. Caleb stole the tray back. Seriously, if he didn't show, it's his loss. Focus on having fun. You should order something. He popped too many fries in his mouth. Evie nodded, her heart pinching. Motion at the door caught at her eye. James strutted in, sending a thrill racing through her. Everything inside of her warmed. He's here. Okay, you got this. Callie squeezed her arm. The wind blew James's hair into his blue eyes as the door closed behind him. He shoved his bangs aside. Man, she would love to run her fingers through his hair. He licked his lips and her gaze darted to his mouth where she lost herself. They locked eyes as he strode over. Hey, Caleb. Callie. James slipped into a personal space, her skin sparking and burning, the spicy scent of his cologne stealing her words. His intense gaze drifted to her lips, setting her cheeks on fire. I got your text. Sorry about your phone, but I'm glad you're here. His dimpled smile took what was left of her mind. Um, yeah, me too. Now let's kiss, Evie grinned. Caleb coughed, sending him into a fit. James smacked him hard on the back, sending fry debris everywhere, including her hair. She touched where it landed, trying to find the fry discreetly, but her fingers came up empty. James winked at Callie and picked the fry out of Evie's hair, tossing it in front of Caleb. What would you guys do without me? His dimple popped in a magical smile and everyone in the room faded away. Tucking her chin, she stared through her lashes. Thanks. They might be different, but if she didn't care, maybe he didn't either. He was there. He'd come out to be with her. The idea turned her bones to jelly. You want something to eat? He ran his fingers through his black hair again. His gorgeous blue eyes searched hers from beneath his bangs. She couldn't hold his gaze. Fireworks tickled the edges of her stomach and a flush of heat ran across her skin. She needed to keep it together. Sure. Can I grab this stool? He asked Caleb. Frowning in bright red, Caleb moved down one, dragging his fries with him. Fine, but there are plenty of other seats. What do you want to order? He smiled. Burgers might be good. Sounds perfect. He wrapped his knuckles on the counter to get the burger master's attention. Can I help you? McCaffrey's owner flipped to the next page in the pad and he held. Two orders of fr burgers, fries, and chocolate shakes. It'll be right up. He marked the notepad and stuck the paper above the grill. Clouds of thick smoke billowed and writhed around Wyatt and his father. It was too thick, almost like she could scoop a handful out and shape it into a ball. Curling and multiplying around the men, it climbed the back wall and blacked out the light above like some eerie indoor solar eclipse. Shouldn't they be worried? Evie narrowed her eyes at the massive column of smoke. Nah, it's normal at McCaffrey's. James leaned on an elbow, blocking everyone else out and locking eyes with her. Her heart fluttered at the intensity in his eyes, but the smoke flowed thickly behind him, catching her eye. She wasn't out often. Maybe he was right. The smoke swirled in an undulating mass. The same face from outside now formed above the grill, using the smoke to manifest its body. Evie choked and coughed, shaking her head, but the shadows couldn't, couldn't be real. Unless they were something demonic, like they talked about in church. Then they could be. She glanced back and met two yellow eyes. A shudder fought its way through her, and it was all she could do to look away. The vis vision, which is what it had to be, or hopefully maybe a delusion, sent prickling across the nerves of her skin, sparking tiny rows of goosebumps and a wave of dizziness. Crap. Get a grip. She shook her head and shifted her gaze to the counter, whispering, no way. Somehow it had to be. 
It is real? You all right? James brushed her hand with his fingertips. Yeah, sure, hungry. Evie forced her gaze on James. Nothing was going to ruin this night. Nothing. Good. James turned to Caleb, who asked him about something from a class they had together. Evie took a moment to gather her wits. She refused to shift her gaze back to the cloud. She was being so lame, like this was so stupid, childish, even scared of a boogeyman kind of crap. She needed to get a grip. Nothing formed out of smoke. She forced her eyes up to prove reality was stronger than her imagination, but the beast grinned back at her. It floated over the men and swooped at her, snapping its six-inch teeth, dripping venom on the counter. She yelped and jumped back as the smoke dissipated and poof across her face. She coughed. James stepped to her side and touched her arm. You okay? That smoke is not normal. She coughed again. Could she be losing her mind? People didn't see demons, and she never did before, either. A loud beeping alarm pierced the den. The smoke swallowed Wyatt and his father, blocking the back exit. Someone screamed. Chairs scraped along the floor, and something heavy, probably a table, hit the ground. And that's the end of chapter one. I hope you enjoyed this. It has been a pleasure um, launching Hunted by Darkness. Uh, if you enjoyed this reading, go ahead and get your copy on Amazon. It's also on Kindle Unlimited for free. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited, you're already a click away for no more money than you spend for your typical, you know, what is it, $10 a month. Um, Kindle Unlimited is one of my favorite things. So anyways, title is Hunted by Darkness. J.L. Burroughs signing off. Thank you so much for sticking with me for this launch and, and keep an eye out for Rulers of Darkness, which is up uh, book two, which is coming out December 30th. Um, stay in touch. If you read it, let me know how, what you thought of it. Write a review. It doesn't have to be something fancy, but it's always so, so helpful when you write a review. If you enjoyed listening to this, there might be other nuggets coming out later. So make sure you Hit the like and subscribe buttons and, and stick around for more of Hunted by Darkness. All right, blessings. Bye.